Our speaker tonight is the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ. And when you say the name of Bishop Charles Blake, you begin to see a lot of different images. You, begin, you, be, you see a, a pastor. You see a, a leader. You see someone who has made a difference in the lives of other leaders whose church stands out among all the leading churches in America. This is truly a man of God who's been called by God to preach God's word. So I want you to make sure that you give none other than the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ and the pastor of West Angeles Church of God in Christ and Apostolic Church of God welcome Bishop Charles Blake. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, rich of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Second Samuel 14 and 14 says, For we will surely die and become like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up. Again, water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. An exciting set of circumstances and events surround the words that I've just read to you. But just for tonight and for focus and time's sake, I want to restrict our attention to these words only. Water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Water is the most abundant of the earth's resources and covers approximately 70% of the surface of the earth. Not only is it one of the earth's most abundant resources, it is one of the earth's most essential and valuable resources. All forms of animal and vegetable life depend on water for their survival. Were there no water, very soon there would be no life on the earth. The waters of the earth cool the earth and prevent it from overheating. The saltiness of the ocean prevents and controls putrefaction and provides purified vapors that return to the earth in the form of refreshing rain. Would you please tell your neighbor, neighbor, there are some things you're going to have to release and let go because they're like water spilled on the ground. Well, what are you talking about? Let it go. What you talking about, preacher? Well, um, neither of them are divorced. But now they've moved in together. And they're having trouble. Uh, look at your neighbor and say it won't work. Well, give me another example, preacher. Well, they never got married to anybody. They're just roommates. And now they want God to bless their home uh, and bless their relationship. Well, over here, we got two men or two women. They've gotten together. And they're having trouble getting along and they want the counseling center to help them work out their problem. Here's somebody who is mean and hateful. They won't change. And they're praying to God to give them friends 
and positive success. God cannot be expected to bless what God has forbidden. Oh, your neighbor needs to hear that. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God will not bless what God has forbidden. The circle of God's will is also the circle of God's blessings and God's promises. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Lord, help me preach. Let go of stuff that shouldn't have been in your life in the first place. Let go of harmful, non-productive regrets and sorrows about past hurts, past failures, and past defeats. I say it again. Let go of harmful, non-productive regrets and sorrow about past failure, past hurts, and past defeats. Nothing deserves a funeral every day. Nothing deserves a daily funeral. If it died, have one funeral and move on. Look at your neighbor and say one funeral. Some people are so obsessed about failures and hurts in their past that they cannot walk into their funeral, into their future, and they're visiting what died every day. If it died, have the funeral and get on with your life. I'm not saying that you should not try to fix the problems and the offenses and the failures of your past. I'm not saying that you should not try to state search, straighten things out. But listen, after you've done your best to fix it, move on. Pay your debt. Pay the child support. Pay the alimony. Do right by the people in your past and in your present and get on with your life. Somebody in here needs to get on with your life. Some things in your life are done. They are over. They are finished. Stop crying and talking about how you wish you had them back and how you miss them so much and it's been 20 years since they left. Listen, they are gone. And when water is spilled, don't stand there looking at the damp dirt. D-A-M-P, dirt. Move on before you die of thirst. People are obsessing, they're obsessing uh, in a detrimental way over a variety of things, missed opportunities, lost love, foreclosures, evictions, lost jobs, stupid mistakes, hateful and malicious things that they've done, misunderstandings, a thousand other things. But listen, don't cry over spilled milk. You may have to cry once, but don't cry every day. I'm not saying that they didn't happen. I'm not saying they did not hurt. I'm just saying that you can't live there. You gotta let them go. And you gotta move on. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 15. David's son was sick unto death. David fasted and prayed, laid on the ground all night, went seven days without any food to eat. Fasted. He didn't bathe. He didn't wash. He just lay there praying for that son who was sick unto death. And after a while, the son died. And everybody thought David was going to lose it, that he was going to go totally crazy. If he was that bad off when the son was sick, there's no telling what he's going to do now that the son has died. When David found out the son was dead, he got up, took a bath, put on a new suit, had a good, real good meal, ate a steak, went to church, had a good time worshiping the Lord. And his servant said, David, what's wrong with you when your son was sick? You fasted and you lay on the ground and 
you, you travailed before the Lord and you didn't eat and, and you prayed, but now your son died and you got up and got dressed. They say, what is that? And David said, he's dead now. When he was sick, I thought the Lord might be gracious, but now he's dead. I can't bring him back again. I'll go to him, and he, but he won't come back to me. And so oh, David decided he was going to get on with his life. Somebody in here needs to make up your mind. This is the night that you're going to get on with your life. This is the night uh, that you're going to let go and let God be God uh, in your life. This is the night that you're going to move to another level. May I also suggest that some of you need to get rid and let go of your concern about what other people think about you. I'm not going to dumb down just so you won't feel uncomfortable. I'm not going to cut back and be mediocre just to make you feel good. I'm not going to let you drag me through mess and negativity just because that's the kind of world you want to live in. I'm going to elevate my mind. I'm going to elevate my conversation. I'm not going to drop my friends and look pitiful because you are alone and lonely. I'm going to be the best I can and I'm not going to let you stop me just because you might feel I'm being uppity and ambitious. I'm going to be the best I can be and if you can deal with me the way I am good but if you can't deal with me the way I am bye let go I'm convening a mass funeral on tonight we're gonna have a funeral I pronounce that your hurts regrets and past uh, that your concern regarding other people's attitudes about you, things that, that you need to let go, everything that you ought not be worrying about, things that ought not be in your life, I'm pronouncing that they are dead tonight. There they are right there. They're in the casket. We say funny stuff around the casket. Ooh, he looks almost like he's alive, doesn't he? Oh, the mortician did a good job. Uh, but they're dead. Go ahead, scream and cry. Fall out. Do all that stuff you do. I'm closing the casket now. We're on our way to the cemetery. Here's the grave site. We're burying it right now. The grave is filled and closed. We're on our way, driving away in the limousine to go get us some fried chicken. You know, people love to have fried chicken. It's over now. The funeral is over. Now what you just buried may try to show up in your future. But when it does, just say, hmm, dead man walking. Dead woman walking. Water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again so what are you going to do are you going to sit there looking at that damn spot on the ground d-a-m-p spot <laughs> or are you going to get up and march into your future i just came by to tell you tonight that your future is going to be better than your past can you look over at your name and say your future is going to be better than your past I know the water might have been spilled on the ground, but it's not the only water in the world. Hallelujah. People are losing it in this day and time. Somebody will lose their job and go home and kill their wife, all of their children, and then themselves. Well, I, I'm listening. I'm, I'm going to tell you tonight, don't kill anybody. But if you just got to kill somebody, Leave your wife alone. She's doing all right. Don't kill your child. Kill yourself and go on about your business. Can I get some help in here? 
But listen, if you just knew how good God is, and if you just knew how wonderful the future is that the Lord has in store for you, and if you just knew what God wants to do in your life, you would make up your mind that you're going to survive it. And you're not going to lose it over water spilled on the ground. For the Bible says the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. And no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. The Bible says now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. You see, Brother Job lost everything, lost his family, lost his flocks, lost his herds, lost his houses, lost his possessions. And when everything was gone, Everybody thought that Job was going to lose his mind. But Job just said, the Lord gives. The Lord hath taken away. And he might well have said that the same God that blessed me in the first place is able to take care of me in the future because he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth, shining like gold, child of God. It's just a test. After a while, you'll pass the test. But you can't go to the next grade until you pass the test in the grade that you're in. But after a while, the same God that lets you go through the test is going to take you higher to the next grade. And I just came by to say tonight that though things may have been lost in your life, this is the time of restoration. Will you shake hands with three people and tell them this is the time of restoration? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust, the caterpillar, the grasshopper has destroyed. God says, I'm going to bring it back into your life. And God is not just going to bless you but God is going to make you a blessing. Will you tell your neighbor, I prophesy that God is not just going to bless you. The Lord is going to make you a blessing. I know it's been rough. I know you've gone through, but let's think for a moment about what Jesus went through. He was betrayed by friends. He was crucified by enemies. Nails were driven into his hands and into his feet. He was hung on an old rugged cross. The blood streamed down from the wound in his body and the thorns that were on his crown. He died on that cross. He was buried in a borrowed grave, but early, on the third day morning, Jesus grabbed death by the collar and he shook death until death turned him loose. And he arose from the dead and said, all power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. And I've got the key to death, to hell and the grave. Child of God, your future may seem dark. Your present reality may seem dismal and pessimistic, but I want you to know that Jesus arose from the grave. Jesus got up from the dead. And just like Jesus got up from the dead, I see you rising. 
out of your dilemma. I see you rising out of your trouble. I see God bringing a miracle into your life. This is your night. God is going to turn it around. I said, God is going to fix it. And God is going to take you higher than you've ever been. Higher, higher. I heard the Apostle Paul say this one thing I do, forgetting what's behind, pressing to that which is before. I press for the mark of the prize of the high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I've made up my mind. I'm going higher. Higher. Oh, bless his name. I'm not worried about my past. I'm excited about my future. Somebody says when the devil tries to tell you about your past, tell him about his future. Put your hand in God's hand and make up your mind. I'm going higher. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you look for me tomorrow night, you better look up because I'm going higher. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm upward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I'm pressing on. I'm pressing higher, higher, higher. Yada da da da. Shakoba hasa. Yalo no makosi. Shakoba hansi. I feel you're going higher. I feel the presence of the Lord in the room tonight. I've got to go to my seat, but water spilled on the ground cannot be gathered up again. But I heard another word. I heard Jesus say, if you believe on me, as the scripture hath said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit that they believing on him should receive because the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. But when Jesus was glorified, he released into the earth the power of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. And so what Jesus was saying, that your past may have had disaster and trouble. There may have been opportunities that you miss and opportunities that pass you by. But through the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to put a supply on the inside. Hallelujah, that no matter what happens on the inside, you'll still be all right. You'll have a source on the inside and it'll bless you and it'll bless everybody else. And this is Holy Ghost time. Stand up everybody. The Holy Ghost is here right now. The power of the Lord is here right now. I know you've been hurt. I know you've been wounded. I know you're lonely. And I know you're discouraged. But Jesus said your supply is going to be on the inside. And I'm going to give it to you that you might make it even in the desert, even in the dry place, even in a troubled place. When your house is foreclosed and your rent is overdue, Jesus said you're still going to make it. It's going to be all right. And he said it's going to happen through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I've got 
power that you can't see. God is living inside me. I can fight any enemy for God and me. I am a majority. Will you tell two people God and me? I am a majority. Hallelujah. 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 I've got to go sit down. But the Holy Ghost wants to refill you. The Holy Ghost wants to anoint you. The Holy Ghost wants to empower you. And if you let the Holy Ghost have his way in your life tonight, tomorrow, no problem. Next week will be no problem. Next year will be no problem. When I count to three, I want you to throw back your head and begin to praise God as never before. Don't stop praising him until he fills you again. Is there anybody here who has the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah! 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 I received the Holy Ghost in 1957. Took charge of my body. Fell out on the floor. Couldn't hardly walk. Couldn't talk had a stammering tongue, was overwhelmed with a language that I'd never learned before. But when I got up, I got up in the power of God. How many of you would not mind if God did you like he did you when he first gave you the Holy Ghost? My prayer is, Lord, do me like you did me when you first baptized me. When I count to three, I want you to praise him until he fills you again. I want you to bless him until he touches you again. One, two, three, hey! Come on and praise, let's praise. 